My name's Ken Coffey. I'm with Atriate Medical. It's a tough audience this morning because my daughter's here, so normally I'm not nervous, but uh, I am this morning. Say hello, Kara. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Good. What you're looking at um, on the right is a surgery uh, in Prague. Um, we're treating a patient for atrial fibrillation, but I want you to think about the one, the image on the left. There's these six blue spots on the heart. We don't think too much about the heart or how it works, but this is a fun fact that you can tell your friends. In the next 10 days, your heart will beat one million times. And if you live to be 70, your heart will beat more than two billion times. So in the process, sometimes things go awry, and that's what we're gonna talk about atrial fibrillation. Um, Atrian's a company we're based in the west of Ireland in Galway, a really nice med tech hub. Uh, we've treated 36 patients to date, first 24 cohort were for safety and feasibility. And I'll show you the really exciting results in the 12 uh, patients in efficacy. Uh, we've raised about six million to date, about half of that's non-dilutive. And uh, we are looking for additional funding for the next stages. Uh, it's interesting or uh, point to point this out. This is a Mayo Clinic invention. So um, it was invented by Sam Asservatham, and then we brought it over to Ireland and have incubated it uh, for about seven years now. Talk about atrial fibrillation. Everyone knows somebody that has atrial fibrillation, right? There are four people in my family that have atrial fibrillation. Uh, and if you're 65, you have one in 10 chance you're gonna have it right now. And it's just gonna be a progressive disease. And, and I'll, I'll just say this one thing, there is no cure for it. And Atrian is actually um, out to change that. There's actually a cure and that's our product. Uh, so if you show up at the, um, if you show up at A&E or the emergency room, the first thing they're gonna do is give you medication, and that's not gonna work very often, maybe about 30% of the time. And that medication you take is not just impacting your heart, but it's impacting all your organs. And in fact, the most um, successful uh, medication is amiodarone, and that starts to attack your lungs. Um, once that fails and it makes you miserable, then a physician's gonna say you probably need an ablation. So they're gonna go inside your heart and they're gonna freeze it or they're gonna burn it. Uh, with a new technology pulse field, they're going to sort of start to damage the actual uh, muscle within your heart. And what they're trying to do there is there's these pulmonary veins that sort of act as motorways or highways where the signals on the outside of the heart are entering. So they create these scars in an effort to try to um, uh, solve the problem. But you'll see in the first year, 30% of those patients will have a recurrence and they'll have to have another ablation and many will have to have a second and third. And physicians really don't know what to do beyond that because they don't have any options and we're here to change that. We have a pulse field generator that basically goes in and shocks the heart at a thousand volts. Uh, very, very high intensity basically just opens up the pores of the cells and they die. So there's no necrosis. It's a, it's a really friendly and very safe energy. We're doing it on the outside of the heart because that's where the condition lies. So um, we are in the epicardial surface. You'll see on the right, uh, Dr. Skalski is holding one of our specialty catheters. Uh, on the left is a pulse field generator. And then we actually infuse a little saline to sort of make it work better. We started this effort to do uh, patients that were just having open chest surgery, like uh, basically cabbage or coronary bypass or valve repair. And that was sort of a way to have the surgeons, doctors look at the targets and treat those. And our ultimate goal was to go minimally invasive, just a very, very small scalpel incision here and then go on the outside of the heart. But as we progressed there, we, we noticed there are a lot of surgeons that actually want this for people that are having open heart surgery. So we have two sort of uh, revenue models. Um, so here's the exciting news. So we took 12 people who had atrial fibrillation that were actually gonna have um, bypass surgery or valve surgery. And we, when they opened their chest and their sternotomy, we went in, we took some measurements, we treated them um, with our very gentle energy. We're gonna shock those little neurons on the outside of the heart where the uh, you know, condition begins. And, um, and as you'll see there in one month, they were all AFib free. Uh, three months, a female patient, valve patient, uh, had an event on her monitor. She didn't know it, so she was asymptomatic and resolved within an hour. And then six months, they're all free, and then just, we just got the data on 12 months. So there, this is an energy, uh, this is a treatment for AFib that actually uh, should, in fact, be a cure. This is a very busy slide, forgive me. Um, so basically what it's saying is we're sort of taking two pathways. The, the faster way to market is gonna be this open chest. So about 25% of the people that are actually going, undergoing open chest surgery have atrial fibrillation and they're not being treated. 
Uh, some of the very, very late stage people are, but not the early stage. So we see a good opportunity there. A lot of surgeons want this. Uh, and then the real goal is to address those people uh, in this minimally invasive approach uh, in this larger market. You've probably seen a lot of the other presentations in a six billion uh, market. So the interesting part is that if you have 30% failure in the first year and this market is growing, you're gonna have lots and lots of more redos. So um, that's where we're gonna come in first. Um, so we're raising 28 million to treat um, over 90 patients within about 24 months. So we put pretty aggressive timelines on the bottom and you'll see sort of the milestones for, for our open chest work, which we've got a lot of good data on. And then above is sort of the longer pathway. So to put it sort of succinctly, in 24 months we'll treat 90 patients and five of those will be minimally invasive in the States. You can look at it a little bit differently on the left side, open chest uh, procedures, and on the right, minimally invasive, a longer timeline, of course. So what really are we doing? So if you, you really don't think too much about your heart, but your brain is telling your heart to, to basically increase or decrease. So heart transplant patients, hearts will beat about 100 beats per second. It doesn't change. But when you stand up, your brain tells your heart to increase. When you run, it tells it to increase. When you sleep at night, it tells it to decrease. So there's this mismatch as we get older, as the heart ages, um, to basically the central nervous system is sort of competing with the um, autonomics of the heart. And that's where we're going after the actual origin of the condition. And those, those nerves you see sort of landing on the heart there. So our access can be minimally invasive. Uh, for those of you who know catheters, the eight French, very, very small uh, catheter or open chest procedures. Um, robust um, IP portfolio for you investors out there. It all began at the Mayo Clinic and they have very, very good lawyers that they work with there. Uh, we're based, again, in Galway, so west coast of Ireland, and we created some IP when we were in the university, and since we spun out, we've actually um, filed more IP. So, um, really robust IP portfolio. I, I see a lot of the slides, the, the teams that are backing these companies are extraordinary, and we have those as well. Particularly, um, just to mention a couple, uh, Sam Astrovatham on the right was the inventor of that. Um, Mark Carlson, we've brought on the board. He was the chief medical officer for St. Jude in Abbott. And the good thing is he's retired, so he actually has time for us. And uh, we have uh, on the board um, people that total uh, the exits, four exits of over two billion. So we've got some uh, really good uh, team members there. So thanks for your time, and uh, I'm happy to catch you afterwards. So thanks. Great. Great.